Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions with Pastor Sutton on Wednesday, January 4th, the 10th day of Christmas. That's what it is. It's the 10th day of Christmas. Now, who can tell me what the uh, song calls for on the 10th day? Because I, I don't remember. Uh, it's 11 lords a-leaping. Oh, 10 maids a-milking? Is that what it is? I don't know. Comment in the doobly-doo if you know. Um, I'm not going to sit here and sing the whole thing because... I don't care about the song. It won't work. It won't, Bonnie says she doesn't care about the song. Well, you know, that's okay. I don't really either, but, you know, it marks the time. Good morning. Um, a little better again. Um, I was actually, up until about a half hour ago, I was actually clear through my whole head. Oh. And it was wonderful. But now the I had to take Zan to school and, and the stuff starts running again from being out in the cold and um, but better better and uh, Bonnie and Zan are not really better but he's went to school anyway so he has a <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> he has a major project to present on this morning <coughs> it is poly sci class and he's also doing the the play is, is the musical is starting their the read-throughs with the uh, with the script. So, and I have class this evening with or this afternoon with the Bible history kids, and tomorrow I've got uh, tomorrow afternoon I've got chapel at the uh, uh, nursing home. Yeah, Pinecrest Nursing Home down in Merrill. So today tomorrow's going to be busy. Today's busy. We'll get some stuff done here. So good morning. Glad you're here with us. Spend a little time in God's Word as we as we move through this. Let's see who's here. Al, good morning to you. Kathy, good morning. Geraldine and Neil, hello, hello. Bonnie telling us it's 27 here in the big state, uh, the big city of Irma. Actually, the roads weren't bad. The only problem I had, my nose is going to do this again. Um, the only problem I had was on our turning off of the, the interstate or the highway onto our county trunk. It was all ice right there. <laughs> Zan drove himself yesterday, but Bonnie was a little concerned with him being on the tired side and not knowing the road conditions, and it's the first day of really icy. Oh, my ear did something weird. My eardrum sucked in. Um, so we, So I took him. Renee, good morning. Uh, yeah, a little icy over there too. I would, I would expect that. You got about the same stuff we had. Connie and Robin, good morning to you. Uh, snow flurries and yeah, it's snow flurries here too. We aren't supposed to have any, um, but we've got flurries coming down. Adam, good morning. Uh, Massachusetts bound. Wow. All right. Well, have fun out in the East Coast where they're talking about having the worst storm ever. Ten Pipers Piping. Thank you, Renee. Um, we'll go with that. I won't, oh, wow, that was weird. Julie, good morning. We'll probably see you this afternoon when Noah comes for Bible history class. So, All right. So good morning to all of you and those watching the background. Hello as well or later today or, or what have you. Glad you're taking a little time to spend in the Lord's Word on this Wednesday. Let's uh, get right into this Lutheran service book. 295 daily prayer for individuals and families as we get rolling here mm. <clears throat> maybe suicide today in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen in the morning O lord you hear my voice in the morning i prepare a sacrifice for you and watch my mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day O lord open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, Psalm 111. Um, oh, <clears throat> simply a psalm of praise for the Lord and all his wondrous works. So Psalm 111, 1 through 10, the, the whole psalm. What have I got a note here oh yeah it's in it's in the catechism in the 2017 catechism explanation under the first commandment um, what does god require of us in the first commandment the 10th verse tells us so let's see what we got here psalm 111 
maybe. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with the faithfulness with with faithfulness and uprightness he sent redemption to his people he has commanded his covenant forever holy and awesome is his name the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom all those who practice it have a good understanding his praise endures forever glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever amen the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and all those who practice it have a good understanding. When people hear the word of God and believe, um, and, and uh, know his, his covenant, right, the, the new covenant in Christ's blood, um, and, and even the Old Testament covenants, which are proven by God's works, the things that he did, his creation, the redemption, and his provision for us, um, that is wisdom. That is wisdom. Um, but wisdom is also shown in, in, the, in the act of, of living by faith in Christ, trusting in him. Um, Luther suggested that the words of verse 4, the Lord is gracious and merciful, should be painted in golden letters around a portrait of the Lord's Supper. Um, for in this supper, Christ, uh, Christians continue to remember the words and works of the Lord. So he has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. And it's true. That's part of what uh, our worship service is and, and the, the pinnacle of the service where we receive um, the, the Holy Supper. Um, it's not just in remembrance of Christ, but it's in remembrance of what Christ has done for you and that he has given you his body and his blood for the forgiveness of your sins to be received, that forgiveness to be received by by faith in him and what a joy that is what a joy that is to to receive that that great gift of god all right let's go on to our our reading today we're we're going to start the letter to the philippians today we finished we finished ephesians yesterday and i i just you know i don't know if it's a lack of ambition or just a continuing on but we'll read through the letter to the to the philippians today which is the next next letter in the Bible, the next Pauline epistle. So 1 through 11 today, <clears throat> reading the, the um, Paul's greeting, the epistolar greeting, and, uh, and his, his um, prayer of thanksgiving for the people of Philippi. So, um, so Philippians 1 through 11. Oops. Paul and Timothy servants of Christ Jesus to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi with the overseers and deacons grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ I thank my God in all remembrance of you all my remembrance of you always in every prayer of mine for you all making my prayer with joy um, for you all making my prayer and joy. There we go. Because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all, because I hold you in my heart. For you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. It is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may 
approve what is excellent. And so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, I am just all of a sudden. What did you people do to me? Maybe it's my study. Maybe I need to clean in here, which I do. But So he begins with, uh, Paul begins with uh, the... Um, the, the, the normal, standard, common, epistular um, greeting. Um, the person who's writing letter the, to the, who, who the letter is to and, and, and a greeting uh, of grace, which, which Paul accepted the letter to the Galatians is how, how Paul starts things. So this, is, this letter is coming from Paul and Timothy, and he uses the word the word servants here of Christ Jesus. Um, but keep in mind that what we translate as servant into English is doulos, um, which is the word for slave. Um, and, and we've got to keep in mind that, that slavery in New Testament times was not what we think of today. Um, that, 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 um, many people were were slaves in the in the in the time of of Christ, and to be a slave, a doulos, was what we would call a servant. Um, the 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 person worked in a household, um, and and did what their master um, required them to do, and they were clothed and fed and housed, um, and some even received a stipend of some kind. Uh, for doing that, um, and the more faithful they did it, the, the better their life was. Um, and it wasn't it wasn't a disgrace or a dishonor. That's just how things were, you know. Um, we we've turned um, we've turned that word slavery into a into another thing. But um, we are uh, by our fallen nature, we are slaves to sin. Um, Denying God and and seeking to join with the old wicked foe, traitors, having no rights and possessing no ability to free ourselves from that situation, which is truly slavery. Um, but in Christ, we have been set free. Now, that doesn't mean an earthly setting free. Um, uh, it means a spiritual being set free from sin, death, and the power of the devil. Um, but we still work in in various institutions and positions. And so he, he, Paul and Timothy, doulos of Christ Jesus, servants of Christ, which is not a bad thing at all. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my Lord than dwell in the, house of, to dwell in the tents of the wicked. Um, and then to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi. So this is to all the, all the church in, in Philippi. Um, with, and it's interesting that he uh, says to all the saints with overseers and deacons. Um, now uh, we need to. to w w what do we want here? What do we? What are we? What are we hearing? Um, overseers, uh, episcopoi. Um, those are the the bishops or the the um, heads of the church. The the pastors, the preachers, the teachers, the the deacons, the diaconi. Um, those who are aiding the pastor and, and the leadership of the congregation and the work that the congregation does there. Um, so these are these are good things. These are these are good and righteous titles. Um, it's in First Timothy that we talk about uh, what a deacon is, um, and, and in another place what an overseer is. So uh, overseer, a pastor, or a bishop. Uh, deacons, those who are working with the overseer, the pastor, the bishop to carry out the work. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord Savior Jesus Christ. This is this is uh, this is a blessing uh, that Paul uses commonly. And then he thanks God. I, Paul says, thank my God in all remembrance of you, always in every prayer. Um, 
uh, up every prayer of mine for you all making my prayer with joy. Um, why? Because you are partners in the gospel. Because you are believe. Hey, Glenn, good morning. Because you are believers in Christ Jesus, right? That, that, that you are growing in Christ. And that's what the rest of this section is, um, is talking about how those people in the church at Philippi, with the overseers and the deacons, are growing in the grace of Christ and, and um, sharing that word uh, within their community, right? Um, and, and I am sure of this, right? This is, this is a certainty that Paul has, and this is a certainty that a pastor has for the faithful in the congregation that, that um, he who began a good work, your baptism, will bring it to completion on the day of Jesus Christ, right? That, that you are assured of your, of your place in heaven, not, not by what you've done, but by your trust and faith and confidence in Christ Jesus. And f- the faith is not the object of our worship. Christ is the object of our worship. And the faith is what receives those things that, that God gives us, right? Uh, Paul says, it's right for me to feel about you this way because I hold you in my heart. For you are all partakers, participants in, in, with, with Paul, with me, in, in grace, um, both in his imprisonment while well, he's, well, he's imprisoned in Rome and in the, in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. The very fact that you believe and that you, that, that, that you are participating in that belief, that you are living in faith, is uh, an evidence of the gospel. It confirms the gospel of Christ. Right? You believe and therefore you know. Wisdom from the psalmist, right? Um, now he he yearns, Paul says he yearns, and I, I you know, this is this is kind of interesting. Um, for God is my witness, right? So he's 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 making an oath. He he's 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 swearing that this is how he feels. Um, he's making an oath. God is my witness. How I yearn for you, um, how I yearn for you, I, I, how I yearn for your, for you all, I yearn for you all, all y'all, with the affection of Christ Jesus, right? He loves them as Christ loves them. You know, if you go to the individual person, you begin looking, you find that you might have problems. In fact, you may be sitting in the in the pew on Sunday morning, and the person two pews over, and you have a feud of some kind, which is silly. But you have a disagreement of some kind, or you don't like something about them, or they don't like something about you, which is our fallen sinful nature. That's how it is. Um, uh, but it is it is Christ that brings you together. It's Christ that puts you both in those pews at the same place, and it's Christ that gives you the. Uh, the the ability to forgive one another and to look past those faults and to love one another not not because your human nature wants you to but because Christ has made you his own and that other person no matter how many things you might have issues with no matter how many concerns you might have about their life Christ loves them too as he loves you and even with all their faults and all your faults Christ continues to love you. So Paul says, I love you. He's saying to the congregations at Philippi, I have this love for you, this affection for you that comes from Christ, that, that is, is Christ in me and Christ in you. And so it's his prayer that, that your love may abound more and more. And it, Christ is love. God is love. And, it, and, it, and that love for one another, not the physical affection of Eros, not the uh, but but certainly some, to some degree the the brotherly love of Philios, but without doubt the agape, the in fact it's probably the word that Paul is using here that pure love of of God the the, the love that that that, that um, God has that caused him uh, to send his only begotten son to yeah it's agape it's his only begotten son to the to the cross to die for you. Out of, out of the affection that God has for you, his creature. Um, so that's what all of this is. So that you, Paul's writing to Philippi, but he's writing to the whole church, you as well. 
And all of this is so that the fruit of righteousness that comes from Christ Jesus would abound in you to the glory and praise of Christ. That you would live your life in Christ Jesus and rejoice in what he has accomplished for you. Um, rejoicing that, that the child is born in the manger, rejoicing that as he walked among us, he taught and cast out demons and healed flesh, and that finally that he died and rose again for the forgiveness of your sins, for the promise of eternal life, to take you at the end of this world, life in this world into his loving arms. Not because you're worthy of it, because you most certainly are not. I'm not. But because of the affection that he has for you. Because Christ loves you. He loves you. And out of love for him, we seek to be more like him, turning away from our sins, not because it makes us righteous, because, but because he's righteous and we desire to do what is pleasing to him and avoid those things that are not pleasing to him. Like Luther said, that those words should be written in gold around the picture of the, the Lord's Supper because it is at that place that he says to you, my child, my, my sibling, take and eat of my body, drink of my blood, and be forgiven and renewed, for I am in you and you are in me. And together, together in the love of our Heavenly Father, in the love of His Son, in the, in the, the, the indwelling of His Holy Spirit, we have been given a new opportunity, a new life. <laughs> I, I, we, didn't have a, we didn't have a New Year's Eve service this year, which I always like to have, but because Sunday was New Year's Eve, uh, we had first for Sunday after Christmas, but we had communion. We had the Lord's Supper, the sacrament of the altar at both churches, because then you can you can look at that meal and you can take eat and take drink and say, everything that has come before now through Christ Jesus has been forgiven. And I begin the new year as a, as a new man in Christ. I'm going to walk out of the church and sin again. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Daily we sin much. No one they all fall short of the glory of God. But in His grace, you begin a new life and, a, and have a new beginning each time you take eat. That's what His grace is for. So that when you repent, when you say, Ah, why did I do that? It was wrong. It was displeasing to God. Lord, help me not to do it again. And He forgives you and says, Go forth and sin no more. That's the fruit of righteousness that comes through Christ Jesus. And it is to the glory and praise, not of us, but of Christ who died and rose again for you. Amen. Amen. Let's go on with the creed here and our prayers. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Wednesday morning, um, continuing to use a prayer based on the psalm that we used for the day. Uh, today, Psalm 111, Luther's prayer he wrote to go with this psalm. Praise belongs to you, our God, because you have fulfilled your promises to your people, Israel, in the incarnation of your Son, and sent the light of your truth to our fathers when they were walking in ignorance of you. Grant us steadfastly to trust your covenant of grace that we may live therein, Make your works of mercy and truth known to our children, that they may praise your name in generations to come. This in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray also this day for those who have 
asked for our prayers and others whom, whom we know have need. We pray this day for Robin, Mike, Pee Wee, Chet, Carol, Pat, Judy, Jerry, Stan, Tim, Jeremy, Lois, Lewis, Ann, Rose, Megan, Brianne, Reverend Owen, Jerry, Dan, Ezra, Ashley, Dawn, Cheryl, uh, Jack, and all those who call upon your most holy name. Hear their prayers, O Heavenly Father, through your Son, who is our Lord, Jesus Christ, that you might give them strength in their time of need, assurance in their times of doubt, and comfort in their illness. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end that our doings may be preserved from sin, our lives sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things into your hands. Uh, oops, you know what? Don't close the book without, because your brain is not far. Okay. Body and soul and all things, let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Yes, my mind is going in seven directions, so I forget what I'm about to say. God's peace be with you on this Wednesday afternoon, or Wednesday, whatever it is for you, um, morning. <sighs> Boy, I got stuff to do. God's peace be with you. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning, Thursday morning, for our daily devotions together. God's peace.